Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Hope you've got your nice big mug of some hot brew ready to kick off another episode of Time for Coffee. Today, I am enjoying a mug of Café du Monde French Roast. I just got it at the grocery store last night. It is time for another caffeinated career conversation. And today, I am thrilled to have a former Mercy Corps colleague of mine, someone who is based in Colombia. Columbia, the country, not the city in South Carolina, but he is in the nation's capital today to do some advocacy, which he may or may not get into. His name is Provash Budin, who has 20 years of international development experience encompassing leadership, program design, management, and implementation of emergency and development programs. He is currently the America's Regional Director for Mercy Corps, based in Bogota. Ah, Provash, welcome to Time for Coffee. Good morning, Andrea. It's great to hear you again. Likewise, likewise. We are going to jump right into our espresso shots, which are quick questions, quick answers to give our Java junkies a quick fix and handle on this profession. And so first question for you, Provash, what entry level jobs are available to young people who are eager to break into the field of international development? Well, thanks, Andrea. The field of international development is pretty wide. So many things that one can do. And I would say that people that are in college right now are looking to do something in this line of work that start with needs assessments that we always have to do when there's an emergency, when there's a natural disaster like an earthquake or flooding. We need people on the ground that are able to get out to communities affected by the disasters and be able to document and write up what is the conditions for those people and help project managers put those together into proposals. Also, storytelling is really important for us. Be able to talk to people, have them tell their stories so we can communicate their voice out to a larger audience. Sometimes a lot of the people we work with are the voiceless, so telling their stories is important. And third, helping out on evaluations of the work we do. We want to make sure that we're always learning from the work we do. So students and, and young people who can come into a country help us use different tools for monitoring and evaluating our work are very welcome. And You know, I think a a good sense of humor and curiosity are also important to bring to whatever job anyone is applying for. Great. Well, actually, that gets to the next question, which is what is a or multiple skills that you look for in the people that you hire? It depends on the job that we're hiring for, but most of the jobs that I'm looking at are those who can manage projects or provide leadership within a country program. And I need people that are able to do critical analysis quite well, people who can solve problems. Writing well is extremely important. There's a lot of writing that needs to be done with proposals. That's how we get the resources to help people that we serve. And also speaking well, being able to promote the organization you're working for, being able to talk in public is important for the work at hand. So those are some of the softer skills that people should have when they're looking at international development. And there's some harder skills as well. If you're good at finance, that's very useful. If you're good at understanding politics and sociology, those are important skills to have as well. Terrific. So what about someone's major? Is that a deciding factor for you or for any of the folks who do hiring at Mercy Corps to get their foot in the door? I think it really depends on the job at hand. You know, an organization like Mercy Corps has over 5,000 employees around the world. And there's people that fill functions in headquarters where it's a lot of backroom support, which requires, you know, finance people, different type of writers, administrators. And then there's folks in the field and country programs whose job it is to work with communities, develop programs, deliver programs. So things like project management is very important for the field. In terms of majors, it it 
doesn't really matter. There's so many majors that are applicable to development work. Everything from psychology to business administration to economics to communication majors, they all can be applied somewhere. It really depends on what someone wants to do in terms of their own career development and how they see themselves in growing their career and contributing to an organization like Mercy Corps. I know that you have a graduate degree. How important do you think it is for someone to succeed down the line in this field to have a graduate degree? At one level, it is important. I think a graduate degree demonstrates that an applicant has gone through a certain amount of rigor in their academic career to look at critical analysis, to do debating, to design policies and do project implementation. It's not an end all. I think what you do find in the higher levels of the organization are people who do have graduate degrees because they've specialized in certain areas and are using that now towards the job that they have at hand. I would encourage college students to get a graduate degree in something that they're passionate about. I think you'll find it useful later on. What about life experiences? What do you think are most or more useful for someone to have starting out in this field? I think people I've seen that are successful have started out with a deep curiosity for other people's lives. Thinking outside of the box, getting themselves into experiences and places that they're not used to. So this means travel to different countries, being able to volunteer when they can, work on problems that face other people in in foreign countries. You might feel a little out of your comfort zone, but that's what a lot of this work is about. It's, It's not the type of work that is precise in any means in terms of this is what you do A, B, C, D throughout the day. There's a lot of ambiguity and especially when there's emergencies, but Just throwing yourself out there into the world and absorbing what there is through travel, through study, even if it's for a short period of time, it really is a life changer for people. And I think it's very valued in this type of work. So Provash, I know you've been in this field for (laughs) for a couple of decades. What is the best part for you of being in the field of international development? I think for me, still one of the best things is just spending time out in communities where we work, talking to people, learning about their situations, and then trying to figure out how to solve them. I, I get a real adrenaline rush when I'm out, uh, you know, they're outside of the office traveling with some of my staff and other colleagues to remote places. You know, that sense of adventure is still a fun part of the job. And I like that. But I always know it's always towards improving the lives of others. I also like being able to land new programs. You know, when you get a new grant or a program that you can manage, it's it's a great feeling to do with your team and to know that there's work ahead that is going to impact many people's lives. Now, the other side of the coin, what is the part of your current job that sucks the most? Probably cleaning up an audit. In in a large organization like Mercy Corps, you have to manage a lot of resources and you have to be careful with those. And sometimes in the heat of doing the work and you're moving fast, you don't always get all the books right or you haven't done the accounting properly or, or, or have done the programming right. And you have to make sure that we're being accountable for the resources we use from donors. And so when there's mistakes made, you have to clean it up. And sometimes that also means dismissing people, which isn't a fun thing to do, but sometimes necessary. So I don't look forward to those moments, but they are out there. What movies, if any, or fiction books accurately depict this profession? Movies or fiction books? Oh, that's that's a hard one. I think fiction books, some people may say the heart of darkness. (laughs) Is and, and not to be negative, but Joseph Conrad's tale of the captain going up the river in, in the Congo kind of depicts part of the, the physical work that one has to do going to a lot of the remote places. And there's a lot of tough places that we work in. And we face, you know, rebels in conflict areas. We face, you know, politicians that aren't necessarily the most honest. We face very poor communities that are cut off from the rest of the world. And we hope that we're going with a positive spirit to to get things done. But just in terms of the environments that we work in, I think part of darkness captures a lot of what we get ourselves into. Fair enough. And final espresso shot question, what would people be surprised to learn about this profession? Sometimes when people think of a job in international affairs, they think there's a fair amount of glamour to it and you're running around the world doing things. But sometimes it's just a lot of mundane work to get done where you're in the office writing reports and having meetings and it's not that glamorous. And so those are just the 
the daily things that one has to do to keep the machine moving. And so when people go into this, they shouldn't think that it's all a life of glamour. By no means it is. There's some moments out there, but it's a lot of hard work that is very rewarding at the same time. And clearly something you feel passionately about the fact that you've been in it for 20 years. So Provash, thank you so much for making time to have coffee with me today and the Java Junkie community. Safe travels back to Bogota, Thank you very my much, friend. Andrea. Have a great day. Enjoy the Java. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.